Hello and welcome. My name is George and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of Logic Pro so that you can record and produce your best music in your home studio. Today, we're going to look at the all new Logic Pro 11 update. There's a bunch of cool new features that have been added and I'm going to show you all of those. So let's dive in. Before we dive right into the update, I'll just quickly show you how you can back up your previous version of Logic Pro so that you can go back to it later if you ever need to. So all you got to do is go into your finder in Applications, Find Logic Pro, and right-click on it, and click Compress. And that's going to create a zip file like I have here, and you simply want to rename that. You can rename it to whatever you'd like, but I prefer to rename it the version number. So in this case, 10.8.1. Uh, and then you'll simply head over to the App Store and install Logic Pro from there. And then you'll see you'll have the updated version of Logic Pro installed, in this case, version 11. And I still have my backed up 10.8.1 if I ever need to go back. But now let's jump into the updates. So first, I'll share the good news about this update which is that it's free for any previous users of Logic Pro 10. So if you previously owned Logic Pro 10, then you can go and upgrade and update for free. If you're new to Logic Pro, well, then there's also a free trial available that you can download as well. And now for the not so great news to some is you do require macOS Ventura 13.5 or higher for this update. So if your Mac isn't capable of running that OS, then you'll have to download an earlier version. The other downside to this update is not all of the new features are available on Intel-based Macs. So if you have a silicon chip, such as the M1, M2, or M3, then you're good to go. But if you're on a slightly older computer that's using an Intel chip, well, then there's a couple of the new features that aren't going to be available to you. And I'll dive into those a little bit later. Now, once you open up Logic Pro 11, you'll see that it actually looks fairly similar to Logic Pro 10, which personally I am thankful for that they didn't kind of redo the whole interface. They've just taken things from Logic Pro 10 and kind of added onto it. But the one thing you will notice right away when you add a new track is now we have this session player. So previously we had drummer, but now we've also got bass player and keyboard player, which as you'll see in a minute, work in a similar way that drummer does. So I'm gonna start by selecting keyboard player. And you can see here, you have different keyboard player styles. So I have freely broken chords, block chords, arpeggiated and simple pads. Now you can change these later so you're not stuck with your decision right now. But I'm gonna go ahead and pick freely and hit create. And you'll see up here, it created a region that looks similar to what the drummer region was. And you'll also notice up here, there's some chords. And these are the chords that the keyboard player is gonna follow. Now, in order to change these chords or the chord track, you go up here to your global tracks and you just click this icon here that says show or hide global tracks or you can press the letter G on your keyboard as a shortcut and here you'll see the chords that the keyboard player is going to play. Now if I right click in here I can access different chord progressions. So let's say I want to change this to a 1645 progression. I can do that and you'll see how those chords changed. And now the chords are all based off of the key signature, which currently is set to C. And I could change this to any of the keys I would like. So in addition to the different chord progressions that are kind of preset here, you can also edit the individual chords. So for example, if I want to change this A minor, I can simply double click on that and let's change the root of the note to let's say an E minor and 
that changes that chord. So now if I press play, you'll hear the piano player follow these chords and come up with a pattern. Kind of cool. So let's take a look at some of the controls that are available to us. So here under keyboard player, we initially selected freely, and this is where we can change the different style of keyboard player if we wanted to. So if we wanted to switch to broken chords, we can do that. Then we have complexity and intensity. And you might remember with the drummer, there was this kind of XY pad, and you could grab this little ball to either make things more complex or simpler or dynamically more intense or less intense. So that's basically what these sliders do. So if you want a simpler part, just drag that down. And if you want the keyboard player to hit a little bit harder and more intensely, you can bring that up. Then we've also got the left hand and right hand, so we can turn those on and off. So if I have them both shaded off, you see there's now nothing in here. So if I just want a right hand part or just a left hand part, I can do that. And then there's different patterns that we can set to have the keyboard player play to. And that'll change the pattern that you hear. Now you can also adjust the range that the keyboard player plays in. So again, you see the left and right hand. So for example, if I go back to the beginning, So you can hear how the keyboard player went to higher up in the register there when I moved the hand around. Now we can adjust the amount of fills and things like that as well, and adjust the feel and dynamics and things like that. And if you also have a rhythmic pattern that you want to set yourself, well, you can do that here. And that'll come up with a new pattern based on what you've put in here. So there's an overview of the keyboard player. Now, along with the keyboard player came a new keyboard instrument, which is the studio piano. So I can open that up here, and now you'll see we have four new piano instruments available to us. The studio Grand Concert Grand, Vintage Upright, and Studio Grand One Mic. And you'll notice there's three different microphones for the Studio Grand, for example. So you can play around with that to change the sound a little bit. We can adjust the pedal noise and key noise as well. So that's great that there's some new keyboard instruments available to us. Now, one thing to note with these session players is you don't have to use them with the instruments that they first load up with. So in this case, the piano. So if I wanted, let's say, an electric piano, instead of a regular piano, I can do that and just load in the electric piano. And let's just change that sound. And now... keyboard player is playing with that Wurlitzer sound. So that's great. Now let's look at adding some bass to this. So let's go to the bass player and same thing as the keyboard player, we have our different styles here. Maybe I'll stick with modern Motown. Go ahead and hit create. And once again, the bass player is going to follow the chord track that we have up here. So let's have a listen to see what that sounds like. Very cool. And same thing, we can change the style of the bass player right here, and we can adjust the complexity so we want a little bit simpler. We can do that. And again, we have different patterns that we can check out. Or again, go to manual and input our own rhythmic pattern. 
Now for each of these session players, there's also some presets that you can access up here. Now the session bass player also comes with a new set of bass instruments, studio bass. So if we go up here, we have six different basses available to us, classic 60s, rock, session, modern, and American upright. And we have full control over the sound of this bass. Now let's go ahead and add the drummer to this. So hit the plus button there for a new track, go to drummer. And again, we have our drummer style that we can change later. Let's stick with funky songwriter. And that loads up our drummer track. You'll notice it looks similar to the other session musicians, which is different than how the drummer previously looked in Logic 10. But the controls are all the same. So as I mentioned, the complexity, this was just similar to the XY box that we previously had. And then again, you can turn on and off the different kit pieces like we did before and change the different patterns just in a slightly different way. Now with the drummer, if we click on the kick and snare pattern, we can tell it to follow our bass track. So we're gonna go do that. And that's just gonna shift around the kick and snare pattern so that it lines up better with the bass pattern. And same as previously, we can adjust the fill amounts, fill complexity, swing, as well as any ghost notes and the feel. And again, we can input our own manual pattern, but I'm gonna leave that since we told it to follow our bass track. So let's have a listen to what that sounds like. So there you go. So those are the session players, which makes it really easy to come up with patterns of some instruments that maybe you're not that familiar with. If you don't play bass or keyboards or drums, for example, then this can be a real help to try and come up with some patterns for you. Now the sounds that get loaded up for the drummer originally come from the drum kit, which is the same as previously, but now we have the option of changing each individual kit piece for any other drum kit available to us. So for example, for the kick drum, you see that we have all the kicks available to us. Previously, we only had a few of them that we could switch out. And you can do the same thing for the snare or toms or cymbals as well. And same as the other session players, we can also swap out the drum kit for another third party kit, for example. Now, one of the other big additions to Logic Pro 11 is the Chroma Glow plugin. And this is a saturation plugin that you can see here is designed to replicate the warmth and coloration of analog audio equipment. Now, unfortunately, this plugin is not available to Intel users. You can see here, it says Chroma Glow is available on Macs with Apple Silicon. So unfortunately, I can't demonstrate it myself, but you'll see here there's five different emulation models you can try. The retro tube, modern tube, magnetic, squeeze, and analog preamp. So all of these are gonna kind of give you slightly different saturation and distortion that you can try on your tracks to get some cool effects. And you can also try this on your entire mix and just dial back the mix knob here from 100% to something like, let's say 10% to just give your tracks a little bit more grit. So I'm excited to try this out for myself, but maybe some of you can let me know in the comments how it sounds for you. The other big addition to this update is Stem Splitter, which allows you to take an audio file with a finished song and split out the individual stems. So this is great for if you wanna remix a track and you just wanna use the vocals, or the drums, for example, well, then you can take any track and Stem Splitter will split that out, as you can see here. 
So they've started with the one track and it splits out the vocal, drums, bass, and others. Now, in order to use Stem Splitter, all you got to do is import your file in here, right click on the region, go to processing, and you'll see here it says Stem Splitter, which is currently grayed out for me. Now, fortunately for me, once again, this feature is only available on Macs with Apple Silicon. So please let me know how that's working for you if you have the chance to try it out. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know how you're enjoying this new update of Logic Pro in the comments below. And if you're looking to improve your workflow in Logic Pro, don't forget to download my free Ultimate Logic Pro Starter Pack. This includes my Logic Pro Hotkey Cheat Sheet, my audio recording guide, my mixing guide, my gear guide, as well as my Logic Pro session templates. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.